Hey everybody, this is Pete, and I'm actually taking on Fusion 360 today. Specifically, I wanted to show you how to create what I call a structural pattern. This is where we have holes that are not just spaced apart, but they can never be spaced apart more than some distance, maybe 6 inches, 12 inches, whatever. They could be less than that, but they can never be spaced more than that. So this will give us an opportunity to take a look at the parametric side of Fusion 360, specifically looking at some functions. So just to save a little bit of time, I've already created the bar and I've got a hole. Now, if I take a look by using the shortcut key, you can type in parameters, P-A-R-A, -A, or if you're like me, add it to your shortcuts. Go ahead and take a look. I've already created some parameters. So I've got the length, width, thickness of the bar, and I've already started framing out the pattern for the hole. So you can see I've got a whole end distance. That's the distance from the end. I've just got it centered this way on the bar. So it's width divided by two. And I've defined my maximum on center spacing that I want. So <clears throat> in this case, we need to create a couple of other parameters. So I'm going to do this a, a particular way like I do it in my classes. You do not have to do it exactly this way, but I'm going to define some additional parameters. So we're going to kind of go through this a little bit at a time. So we know that we're going to need some sort of spacing, right? We know that eventually the holes are going to have to be some distance apart. They may be six, but we don't know what that's going to be yet. So we're going to go ahead and create one. Hit OK. Now this work gets interesting. So if we have spaces or spacing, we know we need the number of spaces. So the number of spaces is just a number, right? So you can't say I have four inches of spaces. So what you do is you come over to the unit and you say no units. And we'll just say three, all right? And then for the last one, we know that we've got spaces. Now this is a little bit empirical. So if we think about this, if we've got a 12 inch bar and we know that we want a hole on each end and they're both spaced three inches from the end, we can say there's, well, 12 minus 3 minus 3, that's 6. And if I know that my maximum spacing is 6, well, actually, I know that that's, two, that's actually one space, right? Because it's one big 6-inch space. But if I want to know how that's framed out, I make one called hole quantity. Again, I can't have 2 inches of holes, so it's no units but it's always going to be one more than the number of spaces, right? So I'd have two holes, one at each end, one big space in the middle. So right out of the gate, you can use equations inside of these expression fields, okay? So we know that spaces, when we talk about hole quantity, is plus one, so space is plus one. Okay. Now, going back, we have to actually compute the number of spaces, and then the number of spaces will determine the spacing, right? So, let's work backwards. So, if we think about this, we have to figure out how many spaces there are. So, I told you, mathematically, 12 minus 3 minus 3, and then divided by the max OC, right? So, but to do this parametrically, we're going to do the following. OA, and this is what I love about Fusion, it's so easy to just type in the parameter names, whole end dist, but we want it from both ends, so times two, and then we need to know the number of spaces, so it also gets rid of the unit. So if you have 12 inches divided by three inches, the inches would cancel out, you'd get four. So we're going to say divided by max OC, and there we go, we get one. So then we can compute the spacing. So we can actually do the same thing, right? So we say this whole chunk of the formula, but instead of dividing by max OC, this time we're going to divide that by spaces. And that tells us how far apart they are. So that's where you can build this equation, right? So we build an equation in the expression field, always test it. So right now we're right at six, right? Which we expect just because of these numbers. I did that on purpose. If we type in 12.5, uh-oh. <laughs> Q 
can we have 1.1 spaces? The answer is no, you can't. So what we can do is that we come back over here, you can actually type in all lowercase, you do have the ability to make formulas. And I'm kind of old school, so I put them in brackets. And I'm gonna use the ceiling function. Now the reason I use ceiling is remember, it can never be more than the max OC. It can be less, it can never be more. So this is where you get your structural pattern. Sometimes at certain values, it will put the holes a little bit closer together, et cetera, et cetera. So now we can test this out again. Type in 18. We get the value we'd expect, 18.5. There you go. So let's go ahead and actually build the pattern now that we've got all the data in place. I um, have to remember how to make a pattern now. There it is. I can do this. Hey, we're going to pattern a feature. The feature will be this hole. And we want to do spacing because we've actually, that's what we've determined. I'm going to space it out along this edge. And then I like to just kind of move these out a little bit. The quantity is going to be whole quantity, right? We're computing that. And then the spacing or the distance is going to be spacing. Go ahead and hit OK. I think we're good. There. Are. All right. Now let's test it out. So I'll kind of zoom out a little bit, orbit this, do the parameter. And now if we play with that, should see your three. You get the idea. So we can keep playing with these and you see how your pattern adjusts. But as soon as we just get over that data there, it puts in that fifth hole. So that's how you can build a pattern parametrically inside of Fusion 360. And in this case, I'm using the maximum on center principle where it can never be more than a certain value. So I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.